little update on this roof mounted system that we did uh, last spring. I did a short video on it back then. Um, here we are, let's see, it's uh, end of November and the system is finally getting turned online. Um, we're just waiting for our final date from the power company. We had to jump through all of their hoops and it was about an eight month waiting period between the application and all of the red tape. Um, not gonna mention the power company, but there's one in particular that does several areas in the US that apparently is the worst one to deal, deal with when you're doing solar projects. So we were fortunate enough to work with them on this job. So we finally are getting close to the point of bringing this thing online. So a quick backstory for those of you that didn't watch the previous video on this system. Uh, this is on top of a vocational, vocational school or tech college. Uh, basically this is just a giant uh, educational um, example, let's just say. The, uh, the bottom eight panels um, are Enphase. I believe they're the IQ7 Plus microinverters which are intended for a residential application, which when you put them on a three-phase commercial building, it, uh, it creates a lot more red tape with the power company because they don't seem to understand why anybody would do that, even if it's for educational purposes. So the bottom eight panels are microinverters. The top eight panels are on a solar edge. Uh, I believe it's a SE3800 inverter just a regular single inverter and then it's got the little micro inverter boxes on every panel which look kind of like a micro or they're actually they're power optimizers excuse me uh, they're actually power optimizers they look like micro inverters that's kind of a common misconception because micro inverters look like that where these power optimizers look like that um, and for those of you that don't know what the difference is uh, the microinverters, like the ones down there, they actually convert your DC solar power to uh, your AC line voltage power. So it converts it to AC power. So essentially those wires, all those inverters are tied together with, a, with an end phase, they call it a Q cable. It plugs them all together and then from there, those wires go through this conduit right back into the electrical panel. I mean, it's a pretty simple system. Uh, there are some much more intricate end phase systems where there's end phase combiner boxes. If you have a lot more zones of panels, um, I would say you would want some of the more high end stuff. But this is pretty basic. Um, not a lot of bells and whistles on this system. So then on the power optimizers that are required for the solar edge inverter, uh, the reason for those is being this is a roof mounted system, uh, when you flip the disconnect, like the power company for example, hits the disconnect on the side of the building, uh, in the event of an emergency, a fire, uh, whatever the problem is, um, those power optimizers are designed to, and, and the microinverters, are designed to shut these panels off at the actual panel. So let's say one solar panel gets hit by lightning, starts on fire, something bad happens. They go flip the switch on the side of the building, uh, the disconnect switch, and that kills power to all these, this central inverter here. And the, they call it the end phase envoy, which is inside of this box. This controls all the end phase microinverters. So if either one of these loses power, it, basically shuts off all of those devices which shut off the panels. Basically a safety feature. So uh, if you had a, a panel that started on fire or something bad happened, you could kill the whole array and the power company could spray water up here and theoretically it should be safe. I mean, there's always exceptions to that rule, but that's the intent of the rule is to uh, basically render it safe for the emergency personnel. So, a little that's a little backstory on the, on the whole system. I'm not sure uh, 
how knowledgeable you guys are on how this all works, but figured I'd give you all a baseline. Um, and then there's the age old question of which is better, microinverters directly on the panel or the single inverter with the power optimizers. Um, I mean, obviously on this example, I did both both types on the same array, which gave me a little different perspective on it. Uh, performance wise, um, they are tracking exactly the same. So like today with the sun and the, well, I mean, there's it's mostly sunny, there's a couple clouds, but uh, there's no shade on any of the panels. Um, and they're both exactly the same. They're both at, it's like 2,150 watts each half currently. This is only like a 6,000, I can't remember, it was like 6,500 watt total uh, array here. And the sun is pretty far south for the year because we're coming into winter time now. So, but, so basically total we're at just over 4,200 watts. Um, and it's perfect, from what I can tell looking at the app, they're exactly the same on the top and the bottom. So performance wise in direct sun, they seem to be working exactly the same as far as production goes. Um, I do believe that your string inverter, your central inverters, I do believe that when you get closer to the maximum output of your panel, I do believe that they probably have a better performance potential because the a lot of the microinverters, like the end phase ones, they'll max out at depending on the on the model between 300 and 350 watts they'll max out so technically speaking on a string inverter like the solar edge you might be able to actually get closer to 400 watts out of them in a perfect sunny day scenario so but as of right now on a sunny day and in going into end of november uh with the kind of the not optimal angle on the solar panels we're kind of optimal for like september but not really november so um either way right now they're performing exactly the same so uh my takeaway on this situation uh as far as which one of these two models these are from what i've been told i've used other models on other projects between the smas and the solarks a couple other variations I've seen over the years. Um, this is the first time I've installed either of these two options, 100%. I've been part of a job where they use Solar Edge. Um, I didn't really get my fingers too dirty on that project as far as programming and commissioning. Um, but in this case, of these two options, um, I'm leaning towards the end phase as my preferred right now. Reason being is the end phase system was literally plug and play. Everything just plugged together. There was, I don't want to say no thinking, but um, it was like almost idiot proof mounting these microinverters and plugging in the, the cables on the panel into the microinverter. And then the factory Q cable they sent out to plug all the microinverters together. I mean, it was it was just easy like the so the solar edge system wasn't terrible but i mean there was room for error i mean you had to know i mean you could screw these up and plug them into the wrong spot if you didn't know what you were doing so i mean you had to pay attention to what you were doing and nowadays in the in the era of um not being able to find good help um sometimes you want to idiot proof a job and uh in this case, I'm leaning towards the end phase because after it was all done, the commissioning process was way easier. It was like a half hour and I had the end phase basically operational and I was sending the owner their login information uh, to get on the, on the web browser and basically monitor their own system. The Solar Edge, on the other hand, I'm still struggling with that. It's basically commissioned, it's operational, but I am still fighting through the 
uh, monitoring side as far as getting on the app and actually monitoring it from the app remotely. We have internet access. Um, everything, we have all the right pieces here. I just keep getting an error message every time I try to pull it up in the app. So today I'm gonna try to fight through that. It's been the nicest day we've had in a week. I was up here the last couple days for a few hours at the end of the day that when I was driving through, I swung in just to uh, assess the situation and try to, the, the solar edge error that I got basically said try again later. So it's been five degrees the last couple days. So I said, screw it. I'll come back a different day and I'll try again later, like they said. So this will be my third attempt, third day at trying the solar edge, trying to get the app to work. Um, hopefully I can make it happen today. Um, so, but that's my takeaway on it. If I was going to put these on my house or one of my sheds next year, which is a very good possibility. That's one of the things I've been looking into for a, a project that I was actually going to do this year. Um, then I kind of shelved it. Now I'm leaning towards a possible next year project to put a bunch more panels up at my house. Um, as of right now, I'm leaning towards the end phase option just because of how slick it was. And I know how steep the roof on my one shed is that I'm thinking slick is probably exactly what I want. And I'm crawling around up there trying to mount these things. So, um, yeah, little, not my best work here, but here's what we did on the back of the door this box was bought by myself just for the purpose of mounting this end phase envoy in and we stuck all of the micro inverter barcodes inside of here and they give you a cheat sheet for your leds on your screen or on your end phase envoy as far as what the flashy lights mean and basically all your different uh error messages and issues kind of a neat deal so I stuck that on there. I stuck all of my barcodes on here. Um, the nice thing is when you're programming this thing, if you do exactly this, when you're building your array graphic for the app, it literally takes 10 seconds or 15 seconds. You just literally barcode scan all eight of those barcodes and um, it basically populates the app and it all pops up. So it also makes uh, troubleshooting nicer in the event that you have a problem and you have to come back later and uh, work on something. You'll know which one is your issue. So just, a, I guess, a little update on this situation. Um, yeah, other than that, hopefully we get this thing online on the power grid here soon. It's supposed to happen this week, but it didn't happen. So. We'll, uh, all we can do is hope for uh, the next week or two, so.